what a special, 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 special day. day. Today, we have an Australian who has been kicked out of the United States for the past five years. And here he is in studio with us right outside of Boise, Idaho. Let's welcome Jace McAlpine, the gypsy, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the Vanilla Racing Broadcast, episode 12. Thank you, This guy's like 10,000 episodes ahead of us and way, way, way more views on a daily basis than we'll ever have, probably. But here he is on our podcast. Broadcast. On our broadcast. The first first appearance in America. This is my first in person in a while. So is this what the content creators call collabs? Are we collabing right now? Are we collabing? No, I'm just happy to be here. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, dude, you don't got the time. I got free I got free accommodation. I just made one of your sandwiches, coffee. I'm hey, hey, this is good. I'm living good. What was the pinnacle of the trip so far? What'd you tell me thanks for last night? Oh shit. On the way home, yeah. you didn't. You n- never thanked me for picking you up. But <laughs> what did you thank me, me in the car while I was driving you home? Oh, you got me first class. I got you first, you got class, me first baby. class. Yeah, I appreciate oh, that. Wow. That's legit, huh? Yeah, Look I appreciate that. that. Uh, I went to pay for an upgrade, and then I paid the thirty six dollars that the Alaskan upgrade <laughs> fee was. And then they're like, "Okay, let's move your seats." And they're like, "You're already in first class." <laughs> uh, th- th- to to go back even further, I get to the check in counter. And uh, and the guy's like, okay, what city are you flying to? And I was like, um, Idaho. <laughs> Idaho. And the guy's like, what that's, city in that's, Idaho? That's and not I was a like, city. That's a state. Yeah, I was like, uh, the the seven fifteen Idaho. And he's like, so you going to Boise? And I was like, I'm going that's to Boise. The place. Yeah. We figured out last night he's never been to Idaho. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. Aubrey Aubrey asked me yesterday, and she's like, I don't think Jay's been to Idaho. And I was like, Yep. When Figure he got he kicked, when he got kicked out of America, yeah. we. Lived in Georgia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. not even in Georgia. I think we were going from California to Georgia. Is how long ago it was. I've never even. I've now been lived to in your, two different houses. Yeah, I've never been to your Georgia house that you bought. Wow. Never met my dogs. Now you met my kids. My yeah. Jace has officially held my daughter Navy yeah. way longer than Chase has. Uh, Chase has no. been here for six months. Not Jace true. has been not here true. for six hours. Yeah. And uh, you have definitely logged more time with the baby. I'm just getting clucky, yeah. man. Getting clucky. You know, it's about that time. I'm craning it over here. Sorry. This is for Jace. Thanks, guys. Oh, we should we need to play. This is, this play is, this is a special, <laughs> special moment. Special moment. I'm, I'm I, getting teary eyed. I walked in from the phone. I was talking to Will Posey this morning about some editing stuff. Walked in and just seen JC Poo holding my, my little girl. Oh, it, it melted my heart. Seeing mm. seeing my Australian oh, buddy, his big photos. beard. He's kissing on her. It's special. Yeah, so but people people probably don't know, but Wes is like one of my best friends. And we haven't seen each other in five years. So we made was, out uh, when I picked him up. <laughs> yeah, we did. It Unfortunately, was, I was running a little late, so I didn't get to go in by baggage yeah. claim, but I ran outside. Oh, uh, did you? Made oh, out with nice. him, jumped you, back you in. You did the long term parking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get but that hey, little extra I, love in. J- you know how we have the Limp Biscuit thing, like how we yes. jam? Jason and I used to have Bring Me the Horizon. So okay, I, rock, okay. I rocked up yesterday with Bring Me the Horizon on 70. Yeah, yeah. No, it was, a, it, was a, it was a cool moment. I've been waiting that, for that moment for a long time. There was a lot of people looking at us. Yeah. And especially when I went in for the makeout, everybody's just oh, like, okay, well. <laughs> Idaho, long hair guy, Australian. I mean, yeah. lot of, lot of Chase over here fondling with his cord. You I, can't, I can't hear us? Audio. You, no, can't, you I don't can't hear now. us at all? I can't I didn't think it was that one. Was it a different I think it's one? just this seat. Whoever sits in this seat just cranes the shit out of it, huh? I mean, it is crane seat, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's usually why he just sucks. Is it better? Worse? Can uh, you can I, you at least I got hear? You. No, can I, I cannot hear you. I can hear you talking outside, yes. But in the air, it's not really coming through. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need Great it Great start to the podcast, hey, boys. <laughs> you know what? Crane gets a demerit right now. And can we a, demerit um, Crane from California? Like, Can we call him on the phone? Yeah, where is Craniac? Uh, we had to ship him back. Yep, and I don't, he's the only one that really knows what all the buttons do. So yeah, we don't. We don't. Uh, all right, Jace, let's let's backtrack, dude. It has been five years since you've been here. Yeah, the gypsies in America. Where do we even start? We we together, you and I shot um, a lot, a lot. Yes, but we did Ryan Dungey homegrown his retirement video. We were in Kansas together. Yep, uh, standing in nine feet of corn and Dungey jumping in and out of it. You were on a phantom camera. Running around with a generator, if I remember correctly. Yeah, a generator yeah. in one hand, 400-pound <laughs> yeah. uh, phantom in the other. Yeah. Then we did straight rhythm. Yep. And then I haven't seen you for five years. What no, happened? Literally straight rhythm 2017, yeah. So th- it's funny because there's so many people that still don't know that I like 
haven't been in the US because obviously there's a bunch of US yeah. podcasts. So it, you have a lot of US people on there. So I, even me, I'm like, how did you teleport over here, dude? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you, I would just teleport in and out as yep. I could to talk for. I mean, it's a good customs. way. It's a good way. Yeah, it's a good way to make yeah. customs. I probably should have just sold my teleportation <laughs> technology instead of give away my podcast instead for free a on the podcast. YouTube. Yeah, it's like I just wanted to get the product right. It, it's because you yeah. love the sport so much, or you love sports in general so much. Yeah, that was like yeah. you know what I don't nobody wanted to needs, give back to the community. Yeah, yeah. I don't need these trillions of dollars it's in teleportation. It's not about technology. money. Yeah. But no, so I, 2017, did straight rhythm. I, my ex-girlfriend, her mum got sick. So I like went home to try and like be with my sick girlfriend's mum. Uh, and I didn't have a work visa at that time. So I had a work visa for a long time. And then I was trying to come in on a, on a holiday visa, got stopped at the, stopped at the border basically. Uh, and the guy was like, what are you doing here? And he said, are you working? And I was like, I'm not working. I'm not working. And I kind of like, <laughs> I'm not working. Clearly you have not 14 working. cameras with you. Well, no, 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 that's just for personal use. Yeah. Thing. And there was like a whole thing. I was like, well, dude, I, I had a company here. I lost my working visa. I'm trying to get my working visa back. It yeah. was, I was trying to explain the whole deal and the guy just wasn't having it. And you know, you just, just get like that, that one guy that had a bad day um, and then that whole process led to me basically getting a life ban on my ESTA, which is like the, the, the treaty between Australia and the U S so you can basically, any American can go to Australia without a, without a visa for three months. And so I was trying to like come in on uh, that and it had been like a couple of times because I like lost this working visa yeah. and I was setting up a new company and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, the guy basically just said, you're done here, bro. And, uh, <laughs> I, you've told me this story before. How long were you detained at LAX? Dude, I was in jail. Like they literally LAX. LAX in a cell. Oh. Cause I kind of kicked off a little bit. Like once I figured out that I was, yeah, you done. were, you were fucked anyway. Yeah. Right? I was yeah. like Google Burley motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's where I'm going. You're, bowers, bear. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, you'll still be in this motherfucker. So anyway, they, they like threw me in jail. It was so gnarly too. Like, they took the uh, they took the string out of my sweater. They wouldn't let me use my shoes. Wow. They cut the they didn't string want you out of yourself. Legit, the- <laughs> yeah, legit. So I like laid, and it was bright. It was like this bright white box of a room with a concrete like bed, a stainless steel pisser, and Some that, dude that named was Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> No, that was with me and Baron. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I just spent like 24 hours in this fucking jail cell in LAX. And then uh, I got marched onto the plane in handcuffs. Shut up. They legit, I was just like, they treated me like I was trying to blow the, the place up. And then, yeah, so I just like got put on a plane and, and that was it. And the reason why it took... I always wanted to come back to the U S like I'd spent most of my twenties yeah. here. Obviously this is like where the sport is and like my kind of my shit. You know? and, yeah. and, uh, but I basically couldn't come back unless I was on a legitimate visa. And so, but I mean, it's one of those things, like I, I say it all the time on, on the podcast when I'm talking to people that it's like, sometimes the best things in your life come out of the worst things in your life. And I mean, I just remember being in that room thinking like, dude, you have just ruined your life. Like you'd work to get here and you'd work for all this and you've like ruined your life. You've let down all these people. Like I had a dog in America, I had a car, I had like, or it was literally a nightmare. Um, but I'd done to go back to the homegrown. Jeremy from Red Bull had given me his credit card to like buy a couple podcast mics to do this podcast with Adam LaRoche and Ryan Dungey to try and like use it for voiceover mm-hmm. for the, uh, for the homegrown project. And, yeah, and ironically it became episode four, which is really episode one. That was the very that was first, the first time I Gypsy ever, Tales yeah. podcast wow. that we ever recorded. Yeah. And no I way. remember, I remember Dungey, he came up to me after we did it and he was like, dude, like I've done a lot of interviews. I've done a lot of this stuff. Like we've worked together a bunch. He's like, that was really, really good. He's like, I think you should do more of this. And I was like, damn, like I, I really enjoy Yeah, and I, I've spoke to Dungeon about it since and said like, man, if it wasn't for that, like it was a few right. things, yeah. you know, that kind so of like So it's just spur of the, it was like, you it, weren't no, even it, trying to start a podcast. It wasn't spur at the moment. We, no, no, no. I mean, but like you weren't trying to start a podcast. Like it was just more like, well, yeah, I, I never, I never thought it would be something right. I do. You never Other thought people like were pushing me to do it. Later. Right, yeah. No, for sure. And then we had like this golf thing that yeah. we were sort of doing. Oh, the golf we, thing. We, we were definitely golf. trying to put Jace 
in front of the camera way more and have him be a mouth of like a mouthpiece of everything that we're doing. And and like you said, the best things come out of the worst things, him having to go back to Australia kind of forced him to see where he was going to be able to take this and be the person that he ultimately has become. And we're, we are so proud of you. I oh, appreciate wow, it. And man. yeah, man, I lit- I had nothing, man. When I went Another back, clap. I literally had the, uh, thank you, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I had, I had like two cameras at the time. And then at, actually, least, at least they didn't steal those at LAX because you did have them with you, right? They went through your stuff. Well, yeah, that was the thing. So they basically said, if we let you in, then we're going to seize this camera equipment and then you need to go to federal court. Prove oh, legit. What? So then, yeah. You're just trying to come over and freaking shoot some podcasts. And what, and what, did up, you have bro. the Sony's or Reds with you? No, I, I lost the red. The red, the red went right. in the yeah. So, so I literally had I had one Sony. So I did I did work for you, and you paid for that Sony. There was nice. like a shoot. There was a shoot that I did for you, and you were like, "All right, well, it'll be about this. I'll so pay di- for this." Dinner's on you tonight, then. Hundred percent. All right, <laughs> I, mean, I could use some lunch too. But yeah, it, it was pretty crazy how it sort of worked out, and then it was it was cool because it was one of those things where I had no plan B, I had nothing going on. I was look looking at the barrel of basically like you get a job for the first time in, in right. your life, essentially since you're like eighteen years old, or make the podcast thing. Work, so I, I swallowed my pride. I lived at my parents at 29 years old mm. and I just did the podcast. And, and one thing you're not even thinking about here is what happened to me. I lost one of my best shooters and my best friends. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Yeah. Just gone. Yeah. But look at you now. You got this big ad. Maybe it was good. Well, <laughs> Maybe it was well it's good funny though. Like there's like looking back, there's no way you the podcast would probably be where it is, right? Absolutely. Like it, it forced you to make the podcast work where yeah. like I, I would hate to say kind of like us, it's like, we shoot it when we can. We're not like, it's not, a, it's a very small part of our business, right? Yeah, like, so yeah. it's, we try to get to it when we can, but we don't live and breathe this podcast like you do, right? Like you're, that's your livelihood, right? So yeah. it, it essentially forced you to make this podcast work. Or Dude, broadcast, a hundred percent. And I, I just, I literally had nothing else. And it was at a time, it was to this, at this time now, it was like early 2018 and the podcast thing wasn't a thing. I mean, especially on YouTube, it was. I mean, no one was us- even Steve. No one was using YouTube as a platform, right? Yeah, and maybe the, Joe Rogan. And yeah, well, that was the only podcast that I'd ever listened to. And me and Jeremy, when we'd go to shoots or we'd go to races, we would like listen to an episode on the plane and then we'd talk about it. And then yeah. I, he he was telling me for years. He's like, you need to start a podcast. You need to start a podcast. You have the craziest stories. You know the craziest people. Like you have to do this. And I've, I've, for whatever reason, just never took it serious. But yeah, when I went home, I had nothing, like literally nothing to do. That's when I started jujitsu. And literally I would do two classes of jujitsu a day. And then I would just sit for eight hours and work on the podcast. Like that was my, my only thing. And I think we're both at intersections in our life. And I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking back now of, of following your footsteps when you first got back and got off the ground. But like when you first started it, when was it? depressing hype like what what was your emotions like were the views good like at at what point in time did you realize it was actually going to become something i don't know what the deal is but like there's a there's probably like a retardation in my mind where like and you would know this from from working with me in the past is that like when i think an idea is good I kind of don't care what yep. anyone else thinks. 100%. Like, that's just, just like this podcast, 17 people listen to it and here we are. <laughs> we're still doing it. Yeah, because there's like a vision that you, you know, it's, and for you guys, this, this podcast isn't necessarily about views. It's like a part of like a bigger, a bigger play, you know? Yeah. So it's like, but for me, I was like, no one's doing this. And I like really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really liked doing it. And I've had awesome conversations with people my whole life. I've, when I grew up, I was like, I was the kid that would talk to adults. Like when we were at dinner, when I was a kid, I would be the one that all the other kids would be at the kids table. I would be at the adults table talking to the adults. Like it's just, I remember plenty of shoots that you were at the adults table and I'm like, does this guy ever shut up? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so then I like, I literally, he I would like, also be the guy traversing topics that I'm like, we should not be traversing these topics. At dude, this particular dinner him, table. And, him and Jay in a room. They may never leave, <laughs> oh bro. <my> God. <laughs> oh yeah. So, but yeah, so I just like, I, I thought it could work. No one else was doing it. It was, and the, I didn't think, of it ever being like a moto thing. I was like, I was like, I could be like the Aussie Joe Rogan type type of dude because in Australia, no one, I remember going home, like when I'd go back from trips 
to be in Oz, I'd be like, oh, you guys listen to Rogan? You got, and yeah. literally no one in Australia was listening to podcasts. And really? I always, I had a rule when, I mean, dude, Chipotle, right? So like I'd come over here, Chipotle was massive. I'd go home, zero Mexican food. And then <laughs> I learned in my time here that Australia is always about six years yeah. behind Everything. the US, right? Yeah, yeah. It, so sounds two, about, it sounds about right. Yeah. So 2012 was when I was like really got like deep, deep into Rogan. And I was like, okay, so I got into Rogan in 2012. So if I'm going to apply the six to eight year rule, 2018 is like the year <laughs> the podcasts are going to like blow yeah. up in Australia. So yeah, it was just like a kind of combination of things. I enjoyed it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to, and, and at the start I had like NRL, like our NFL, we call it, it's like NRL, it's a different sport, but so we had like NRL players, I had V8 supercar drivers. I had like well, that, all these different people. That's what I've there. always respected or loved about Gypsy is the fact that you did, you should have just gone moto and the fact that you thought more centrically and you had access to all those people. Like, I mean, how we hung out for a damn near decade and I didn't know that you you somehow just have connections to everybody and, and the fact that you've done what you've done and it's you stepped outside of moto from day one is pretty damn rad. Yeah, and, and I think like, I want I, honestly, I ended up, I ended up really going into the moto thing, especially when like the US studio, like when I kind of like figured out how to make that whole deal work. Yeah. Um, and then basically I was like, that was a money decision. I was like, okay, I, this is like a way to make this to where like I don't have to, stress so much about money paying the bills like i could have my own place i could you know start to employ people and so we pretty much spent the last five years of this thing like getting it to where now i don't post any content i don't have instagram on my phone unless i like want to go to a race and to post some stories and shit but yeah, so it was Chase, like what he's saying is he has people that does yeah. that for him. Can Sounds you imagine awesome. that life? Yeah, oh we God. talked about it before the poor guy. <laughs> oh, we, we did. I was like, oh man, you imagine how much golf and snowboarding I could the, do? You well, know what's wild is that when you say you don't have to post Instagram, it's like the biggest flex you can do. <laughs> it's it's like, just a flex now. That's the it's weirdest world, You've right? You've been telling me that for the past few months, and every time I'm just like, I just. It's a flex now of I like. Did, that's just, a sad <laughs> flex, though, right? That's actually sad that we live in that I was obviously joking when we came on, and it's like, oh, is this what the content creators called collabs like because like i you know me personally like we've known each other for a long time and even Wes, like i'm not i didn't even want to start this thing man like i was like yeah you i don't want to be on BTS camera dude. like i don't want any of this i, I mean I, we both have we neither one no, of us no that's what i'm saying you here. and i like and but it's funny like i dude i've been in this industry like probably 20 plus years mm. and like dude there's probably like 10 people that know me like yeah and i'm more than fine with that yeah like, it's the best I, way to be i do not like the instagram i don't like I mean, I might post once a year. Like, I'm not about that life. So, like, when I have to be about it, like, it's, it's, yeah, like, I don't even post the clips now. Like, I don't, I don't want anybody. Like, I yeah, just don't, yeah. I don't, I don't enjoy it. But I you, have st enjoyed you still this, have to post though. on Verb quite a few times a week. So, no, that's, that's what he's what saying. I mean. He don't, no, no, he no. don't have to make it and he don't have to post. No, it. no. What I mean is, is hey, like, Chase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what I mean is, is when I do, like, I, I was telling him, I was like, man, I wish I could delete all this social media, but like, I can't, can't because we can't. we're, no. We have to know what Eli, if Eli Tomac's posting that he's stretching his Achilles, like I need to know that, you know? And Sp speaking of, let's take a break in the middle of this. You talked to Tomac. I did yeah. talk to Tomac at yesterday length. At, at, length. at length at Wash Eagle oh, this past week. Length? Weekend. Yeah, so. Right, you can say most of it for yourself, but at least yeah, give yeah, us a little some, Tomac juice before yeah. we go back to the story. Give us a, give us a social clip. Uh, <laughs> so I spoke to Eli Tomac yesterday. He looked really good. Yep. He and was, was he walking? He was cruising, bro. Walking. Shut yeah. up. He walking. Had, he had boots on. He had boots on. He was doing wow. his photos and stuff. He looked like he wanted to ride. He's back. He's he was back. he was talking about like tires and stuff. Like he so yeah. And he's a he's one dude. I don't think anyone really knows that much stuff about him. No. But I I mean, there's a photo of me, him, Roxon, and Will Hahn in like 2011 or 2012, wow. right? And that's probably the extent of the the interactions i've actually had with eli right so yeah yes i got to have like a bit of a chat with him and um and yeah super super nice guy and uh hopefully coming to a podcast near you yes yeah, so i was gonna ask yeah. you gonna get him on hopefully yeah. he hopefully. doesn't do much pod like he he's very like he loves to go in colorado hang yep. out like i mean i get it in the media i get it like there's a just do you right, and, and there's mystery behind him. You know what I mean. And well, I think I, it's part of his persona, right? I think it is point. a bit of it is intentional. Of I, like, I think that's good and bad. I'm though. gonna show up. I'm gonna stare a hole through you, and and I mean more to its competitors, not to the media. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. But like, 
I, I think even within the pits or like, I, I, I would guess obviously like the Cooper webs and stuff. Cause they've grown up. Right. But like, if you're uh, Hayden Deegan, dude, you don't know anything about Eli Tomac. But yeah. it's like, it's like, wow. That, that's a good point to bring up though. Mystery, I think when right? you're, when you're that big of a mystery, it's hard to transcend our sport. Yeah. And so Hayden Deegan has transcended our sport oh, and no, definitely and will forever. Care. And maybe he doesn't, but oh, like I don't think he does. when you look back at your legacy, I don't know. I, for one, am, am, am someone that would be like, all right, cool. I mean, I, I made a really cool impact in this niche. But Bill he could he could have done. Way, so. though, oh, of man. course. They, I mean, they, they, I, I there's think been, it's a different. Don't mindset. get me wrong. Every I think when you get in 450 and you're training that hard all the damn time and it's that gnarly of a job, everything else you just want to fuck off. Yeah, yeah no, I'm I'm all about you doing whatever's really genuine to sure. you. Right? Yeah, I agree. And I think that you know a guy like. I always go back to like the Jason Lawrence. Like that was him. Like he wasn't yeah. trying he to wasn't be. He wasn't faking it. He wasn't trying to be this crazy out there motherfucker to get <laughs> views. I mean, there wasn't really. He, he, views. Wasn't he wanted to do that because he, he was about to. that life. And and in this and when you're about that life, I'm like, bro, do you? I, I yeah. totally but when agree, you're yeah. and Tomac is about that yeah. life. Like he's living the life that he, he wants absolutely. wants to do. Yeah. You know. But, I, just, I just often wonder if they look back, even Villapoto at times now that he's I think living. He does. And, and can say, man, I wish I had done this out or the other. But even knowing how hard we roll on the weekends and how much production we're doing, and it's just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. I got kids at home now. A lot of times, like even going back to social media, I don't even want to mess with it. Yeah. Don't care. And imagine the amount of people he has to talk to. And I'm not just him. Everyone. Jet, everyone. If you're yeah. a professional writer, the amount of people you got to talk to, the amount of autographs you sign. The amount of times you always have to be in a good mood. Yeah. It is. Oh that my part God. alone I is get... draining. And then add on the amount of training. I can that tell you have you to right do now. on top. So I can totally understand why Villapoto, Dunge, uh, Tomac ended up being the way they were uh, personality wise and being, I'd, being re reserved in that sense. But, but also you're just like opening yourself up to just so much judgment. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, you can't yeah. post anything You're right. without some You're asshole. Right. You can be like, good morning. Yeah, for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I was just saying, hey, everybody. Like, yeah. And then uh, yeah, for your privilege. And it's, like, oh, and, and it's hard to be not be. You're not in their shoes. It's hard to say how you would or wouldn't be. Oh, I yeah. can tell you right I, now. I would be a. I mean, I'm, I'm a, you're right. I'm I a Tomac would, through and through. There's no way I could be a Travis Pastrana. I would be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Like that many people would freak me out. Like yeah. I would just be like, nope, get out of, get out of my Pastrana's face. Pastrana's a good one. I've, I, I, we've been around him and shot so much. I've never seen him be mean to us or anybody. No. He's always in a good mood and it's hard enough. Just even our small amount of notoriety at a, a race. Sometimes when well, you're Pastrana's focused and you need to massive. do stuff and like people are interrupting you, it's like, I got shit to do. Like yeah, I'm supposed yeah. to be at this pit to shoot this and people are trying to interact with you. And like, you try the best you can. I cannot imagine having that amount of notoriety. I wouldn't yeah. want it. And I, I don't think, like, I think Tomax, like Anderson, like, they just like riding dirt bikes. It just happens to be they're very good at it. Yeah. And so, like, even Anderson, after he won that title, dude, like, he just well, I think the, shut down. Bro. The sport like, is, like, pretty one-dimensional, or it was pretty one-dimensional for a long time when it comes to the kind of person you could be in the sport. And, like, sure. when you when you look at, like, a Jason Anderson, right? Like when he did Gypsy Tales, like we talked about a lot of stuff other than racing. And right. that was the big thing with me with the with doing the podcast. I was like, you do, if you want to talk about your fucking cats, bro, I'll, <laughs> I'll get deep Let's into- Let's talk about Fluffy. I'll get deep well, into cats with you, man. I'm allergic to shit. You, you, you know probably I mean? read 13 books on them though. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> watched a bunch of YouTube videos. But you, it's you like, know the interior workings of a cat's mind. <laughs> yeah, cat psychology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that when- when there's like not a place for you to kind of be yourself, like when the mm -hmm. sport kind of like really molds you to say a certain thing, but, and whether it's intentional or not, and it's like the generations start to follow, like then there's mm -hmm. a Ricky mold, then there's a yep. Dungey mold. Then, and I think that there's some guys where they're just like, ah, oh, man, I'm just not this guy. Like I don't fit uh, here. And I, Jason I, Anderson, I think cool as fuck. When you know him and you yeah. talk to him away from the, the, the races and whatever. He's the dope dude. He's into so I mean, much they, cool they stuff. They all are. They're all pretty 100%. damn rad when you get them nice, on there. Dude. I mean, I've I, had very few where I'm like, that dude's an asshole. It, it's what the 450 class does to you. I don't care sure. if you're Ken Roxon or Adam Sanserulo. When Man, you look at Webb, Webb all was of them. talking like it, so much smack. And then he got the 450 class, got humbled for a couple of years. And then he went to KTM, which I agree. Like KTM is, is that brand that's like, Hey, do not, do not cause a ruckus. Right. Like, mm. 
to me, I, th- I think we lost some of Webb's personality, right? Like we saw I, it a little. I don't bit. think it matters where you go. I think the four, fifty, two, you two, just three have years, too many the, races, bro. Too many races, and like I, going back to what I just said, you're talking to too many people, you're signing yeah. too many autographs, you're doing too many things on Friday nights, too many sponsor engagements. 17 weekends in a row. Then you get a weekend off to freaking figure out how to ride outdoors. Then you got now <laughs> yeah. 11 plus another three plus motocross of nations. If you do really good, there's no time for yourself. Well, and the, and the thing is, is like you're, you're going to wash Google. No, you're not. You're going to PDX. Yeah. You're going to a hotel. Yep. You're going to the track. The semi looks the same. Yep. The same people are there. The same fans are there. Then you go back to the hotel. Then you go to PDX. And then you, so yeah. it's you're six in the morning. The same, it's six in the morning. <laughs> you're just doing the same shit yep. every single, and it's like, it's literally just Groundhog Day. And then you've got to do it so many times. Well, and, and then like, yeah, if you stay healthy, and it's not, just survival mode, like, you know. Not to be, but like, like how you said, and and it's what it's in regular. They call it beat reporters, right? Like, if you're a beat reporter for the Yankees, you're going to every game. You're talking about the the uh, the games, right? Like, you're not necessarily doing what he does, which is it's very easy to go. Like, I guess what I mean in a press conference, I'm not going to ask Chase Sexton about his fucking cat because no mm. one cares. They care about the racing. So, like, but I don't. I honestly, I don't know. Like, like I that. wish people would talk more shit. Like, for the if I was in the I only got to be in the press conference in the afternoon, like this 451. So I, yeah. I didn't do the 251, but it's like, dude, ask Deegan what shoes he's going to buy with this race. Right. You know what I mean? It's a like, great question. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there is, there is room I've, to do it. I just, people don't I, seem I'm not to saying do it there's not room reason. to do it, but a lot of people like their job is in, which is most of our, like the fans, they want to know about the racing. They want to know why Sexton fell on that turn. They want to know why, mm. like, so don't get me wrong. There is room for it. So like, but I get, well, like after 17 straight rounds of, of a press conference, Jet's like, what else are you going to ask me? And, 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 here by, and vice versa weeks. for the media. I think, yeah, like what I else think am I gonna when ask you're doing Jet? it week by week and like and same, with, same it, with us, dude, create, it's hard. creatively when you're shooting Jet and Hunter all the time, yeah, you're like, always you make this look different. And, and sometimes like you just creativity to get zapped. So you don't even think to think that because you're so blinded by, you, you know, yeah, un- very, uninspired events. You're like, I'm just doing this again. So yeah, when you come in for the first time and you're fresh, I think it's easy to think that way. It is. I, Cause I've done the beat reporting when I was at racer X dude, I would go to a lot of the races and I'm telling you by the end of it, it's like, cause mostly it's the same three guys. It's like, good Lord, dude, what else am I asking right. Jason? And, and it's all about efficiency. You have so much you got to get done on the night yep. or the next week. I you, need don't that need quote. Any, you don't need anything superfluous. When we go shoot, I know exactly how much to get, when to shoot, how to shoot in order to be able to turn it yeah. around as quick as we do, right? So mm-hmm. we could shoot all day and I could ask him a million questions and get this out of the other, but I know what my end client's going to cut. Yeah, so a lot true. of times I don't even <laughs> mess with that kind of shit because let's I'm like, the I, film. Let's, yeah. and the time, two, three people have to have their hands on it before it even goes to an yeah. editor. So like a lot of times I'm just like, well, Danny Stu's the worst. He'll be like, dude, should we be shooting this? And I'm like, we'll never use it. We'll so, never use it. It's but like, that's hours. what happens after <laughs> five, six years of shooting these dudes. I just uh-huh. know so much of, uh, you know, of well, course the, in the moment you're like, dude, a fan would love this. And I'm like, yeah, where's it going to go? Yeah. Who's yeah, going to cut that? That is Same also when true. It, Racer X, like I, I remember I'd be in press conferences. I'd be like, hey, this is actually for a magazine story. Because like, I didn't want to take up more of their time. I'm just right. like, hey, while we're in this setting, this is a magazine story. Please feel free. To right, enter. right. Like, I mean, so like when you are Racer X and you're Weege and those guys, man, like that's what they have to do. They don't, yeah. they need that to fill all these holes of like, so they have to ask. We, we do have a, racing, right? we do have like a bit of a weird deal with like our media too, in a sense, because in like the biggest sport that I'll follow is UFC. And man, the press conferences, like as soon as the race, the, the fights are done, I'm straight on YouTube live to watch <laughs> yeah. the press conferences because those are, yeah, those are intense. They're gnarly, but then also it's, you've got some of the regulars that, because you have to have like a rapport with guys like Weege yeah. has a certain oh, relationship yeah. oh, with those guys. So like he can't be, so like if you, if let's say I'm in the press conference and I'm not trying <laughs> to have a relationship with these guys, like you'll have a dude that's from the Washington times or sure, like the, they don't the, like yeah. the local newspaper or the local stuff. They don't, they're never going to see this dude until they fight in and he may not be on that card again. So he's going to be like, well, what happened with the domestic violence charge that you yes. like? And so if there was an out of town dude that's been following and he's from the right. Washougal post, then he's like, yeah. he can go to chase sex and like, 
man, you are, you're getting yep. really smoked by this kid. Like, uh, I didn't know that you're, is, is it into your head that like, maybe you'll never beat this guy ever a day in your life. Yeah. And it's like, we each can't ask that question. Never. I'm not no. going to ask and, that you know, question. It's fine. This comes up on Vital all the oh, time. All the time, man. And it's like, and hey, it's you not... guys got to realize you can't shit where you eat. No. Like, but we're, we're friends. Yeah, we see and... each other in the airport. We see, yeah. we talk to each other on Instagram. You like, can't we... it's, Dude, it's, it's such a fine balance it's... of being able to be a true journalist, which I don't think you can be a 100% true journalist. Because like you just said, there's questions that probably should be prodded. Well, that we not... just can't go there. Otherwise, you get blacked out. Hey, and also, I was going to say... Pro Motocross and Feld, they won't give out a media pass to a person no. that's going to do that stuff. There's a lot of people right. that are on the internet that would talk that shit, but those they just people, don't know. Those people, they don't make their living doing what we do. And those people probably, like the, I don't, won't name names, but if you put them in a press conference in front of those people, they would not talk the shit they talk oh, on the internet. You know what I mean? No. But, and I think that that's kind of like a good thing too. Like, yeah. I it's feel like we need balance, all of it. Man. And, and no, but I agree. I mean, like I, I do think there needs to be more hardcore journalism, but it's, it's also very hard. Like you say that, but like, what, what are you going to even ask? Like, well, I mean, I there know. are situations I will say that come up that I know certain things or, you know, certain things yeah. that like, if we were to air that out, one, that person would never talk to us. So if we ever needed access for, let's say, another part of our company, right, which makes us the money, then we're screwed because right. we because we all know certain things. I mean, especially Mathis and them when they're at the race. Like, they know things that... Yeah, they know things that... They know say, things, sure. dude. Like, for sure, that even I, as a reader, would be super interested in, right? Like, it's yeah. very... But they can't do it because one, they, once they do it once, they'll never get that information again. Right? But there are guys like there. There is a way to do it. Like I think of a Steve, Stephen A. Smith. Like yeah, that motherfucker doesn't hold back ever. <laughs> he like he'll say, shit, dude. and uh, so. But it's hard. Like you, you gotta, you gotta be. I'm trying to think like why a guy like him. But I mean, he's like famous in his own right. Like well, he's but he also more spent famous years than... and years as a beat reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Like that dude grinded. Like he didn't just show up on TV. Yeah. Like he yeah. spent years studying journalism and like, don't get me wrong, but like there's. But very... he doesn't care to be anyone's friend right no, now. No, he in, doesn't in care. In the sport, you know? No, and, but he doesn't need them. Like, like you yeah, said earlier, yeah, yeah. he yeah. does not need LeBron James because he can go on his show and go, yeah. LeBron James, this and that. Cause he's got, the problem is with our industry, like LeBron James has 40 people around him and then he's got other agents all these people are willing to give Stephen a information right like mm. our sport is so small of like chase sexton might have a goggle guy and a gear guy yeah he doesn't have you know five agents or competing agents or competing teams that are willing to give you crap on chase sexton right like yeah. people do with lebron james or and honestly it's so public like you said dude there's 100 podcasts probably just podcasts that talk about nba yeah you know, so it's very easy for those guys to just, honestly, a lot of them just talk shit. Yeah. And but that's it, what gets, gets them views is them talking shit. Yeah. On but LeBron it, James. But it is getting better. Like it the, the yeah, moto yeah. stuff, like it's slowly, slowly. Oh, even the PR company. I mean, like, dude, when I started, most teams didn't even put out PRs, post-race mm. PRs. Yeah. And it's like, if if I'm KTM, how, I need to know what happened to Michael Moseman. I mean, like you're, you're at a race. Like how many riders did you, I mean, you're paying attention in the front, but like, I just I, watched Hayden. Yeah. I have, I have, <laughs> that's, I have that's no idea it. what happened to Pierce Brown. So like, I held Brian's where... hand the entire two motos <laughs> and we jumped for joy when Hayden won both. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? So like that PR company, like that does help now that these teams actually do have PR specific people to give you quotes and yeah. a little recap. And it, dude, it's, but man, when I started, I think there was like one team, maybe two that did it. So like, and I, Boost Marble AMPM. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean like honestly, but you were part of it with uh, JDR. Like, yeah, I felt they were one of those teams. It's like, but I'll, I'll tell you, like JDR was cool. But I remember we wrote something and like the owner got pissed mm. and like called but everyone's Rex. gonna get pissed, dude. I got yeah. bounced from Moto yeah. Concepts in uh, WSX. Tony Alessi literally walked me out of the no. yeah, walked that's me out I mean. of the pits. I was filming Sealy. And he's like, you're not welcome in these pits. And okay. I'm like, I'm like, oh, what did I say? Did I talk shit on Vince Freeze? Oh, no, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. yeah, so I got bounced. So, so, but, but that's, I mean, when was this? Recent? Uh, WSX. In this, like in the Birmingham. most, re the yeah, yeah, most yeah, recent yeah. one. The one yeah. in Australia. Because wow. he was going to do the, I fucked myself. So, all right, this is a great example <laughs> a great of idea. why people don't talk shit, right? Because I had held my tongue. I'm, I would, 
I pride myself on not talking shit on riders. I'm a very like positive platform. Yeah. Vince Freeze in Melbourne, I was like, dude, I'm so sick of this shit. Like that whole East Coast season yeah. that he'd come, like that was pretty annoying. And then the the Justin Brayton deal. And, oh, I, and, and, Melbourne, and then yeah, yeah. Nicoletti came on the podcast. It was fresh in our minds. And we just like, we let it eat. And uh, and then so at at Melbourne, I'd spoke to Tony Alessi and I was like, dude, we're doing, we're doing the, the yeah. podcast. And he's like, I'm in. And that would be a fucking- oh, It would be a really good that one. would have been a fire <laughs> one. Huge show. And I was so excited for it. He was literally going to do it the week he got back from, from Melbourne. But then me and Nicoletti did the podcast and then that I, we were talking shit on Vince and then radio silence. So that's, that's why people don't do it because people, great. He heard people it. can't sell it. Dude, everyone hears everything. It's fucking annoying. Well, it's a, a small sport. It's a small sport. Like you think LeBron hears the, the 98th rated podcast right. talking shit about him? Hell no, dude. Yeah. Well, dude even but he Tom, knows Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> well, even Tomac yesterday was like bringing up stuff on the podcast and like, I've got to yeah. keep my cool and be like, well, I think it's also oh, speaks yeah, to your like, popularity, right? <laughs> like four years ago, you probably could have said whatever and no one's listening, right? That's so that's so like true. Steve, you, we, like, I think we can probably get away because one, we're fairly new. And someone no one, someone would still Someone will hear it, but the problem is- You guys is are well known enough. Someone will hear it and they won't really tell what was really said. They'll just say, hey, Tomac, uh, the Ver boys were talking shit on you. Oh, well, it's and funny. Like, like, oh, like, no, we weren't. What are you talking about? It's like, funny. Like someone had told me I had a riff with Deegan uh, through one of it. Maybe it was this film or something. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So he showed up to our Verb Shred tour last year at- um, uh, at, Reed's place. at Reed's place. And uh, I ran up with the camera. He's like, nah, dude, I'm not doing this for the Verb camera. And I was like- I was like, wait, dude, let's squash this right now. Like, what's wrong? And he's like, I, I heard you said this out of the other. I'm like, I, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. He's like, you didn't say that? I'm like, what? whatever it is you think I said or didn't say, I, I, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I would have been the one to say that. And I can promise you that is not how I think or, or yeah. you know, whatever. It's and then he's like, like that, then, and then he was like, all right, sick dude. And we freaking fist bounced. And then, uh, and then he hit, well, did a thousand whips for me that day. But like, also but like, say, yeah, same thing. Like he thought I said something, maybe I did or didn't. I don't know. But, uh, Hey Deegs, you're fucking badass. But the thing, like I, I say this to people all the time. Like I don't care about the comments. You can go right. on vital MX and there's like, Thread oh, forum there's posts. always threads on you, bro. Literally, <laughs> you do have some threads on you, buddy. I actually didn't even know until like a week ago. Oh, there oh was yeah, like you someone, got some threads. And like, I, and I went in, I read it, and I'm like, cool. Like, I literally don't give a fuck. The yeah. stuff with me and Pulp, I don't oh, give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I, I, my feelings are not in this, yeah. in that way do, at all. Do you take anything constructively, like when you read that, or do you just say, screw all the well, comments? Well, like, yes, yes and no, though. Like, there's some stuff, I think you'd be an idiot not to, like, take right. some feedback. Like, if things are saying, right. I, my dad used to say to me as a kid, if enough people call you a dickhead, you're probably, you're probably a dickhead. Probably right? a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when you're looking at, we're coming up on, like, 100 million views of the podcast, like, total. Hell, right? all right, here, let's get you a clap, dude. I don't know where the... Oh, I think shoot. mine went away. God, we... Crane! Oh. Crane! He's not... Dude, just... This is a good song, though. Let's... 100 million views, dude. Oh, hey, I, got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, thank okay, you, guys. Yeah. But so it's like, if let's say there's like 5,000 comments, yeah. bad comments on a hundred million views. Like what does that break down to in a percentage? So it's like, yeah, That's there's, true too. there's some stuff that I will look at and I'll take on board. And then there's other things where like, I kind of have thought like, you know, I'm a fairly in, introspective person, you know? And it's like, so the, the big ones are, he talks too much and it's like, or, or he talks about himself. And it's like, I have a rebuttal for that. Like if someone wants to come at me with that and I'll be like, I agree. But also I have people that have cried on the show. I have people that get extremely vulnerable. I'm bringing you stuff that no one's and ever how, said before. And that's before. how you break Almost down the barriers. every episode. And why is that? Because I'll be vulnerable. I'll yeah, talk about my past. To. I'll talk about my child. Yeah. People will go as deep as I'll go. And they forget the cameras here and the mics there when you're being their friend and having a conversation. Well, it's to me, it's, uh, well, they're, to me, they're, they're comparing the wrong things. They're, they're acting like you're a journalist. You're not a journalist. You're, you're a, well, at that point in time, mean, you're breaking the barrier of friendship. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. to me, it's, to me, it's like Rogan, right? Like I don't consider Rogan a journalist. He is a very good, and he wouldn't interviewer. consider himself. A journalist. No, he's I a don't very consider good, myself a journalist. we don't either. He's a very yeah. good interviewer. Right. So to me, it's, they're barking, they're, they're looking in the wrong direction. Right. Yeah. Weege is a journalist, yes. right? 
We, we, it's, we're it's, just we not going to tell you about like a time talking to Trey Kennard, right? So he said that uh, he lost his dad and yeah, bikes were like the thing that that was his place. And then when he told that story, I was like, man, that's crazy because my granddad died. We went to the hospital. He, he died. We watched him die. And I was riding right before it happened. And I said to mum and dad, like, what do you want to do? And because we had to go to the track and yeah. they're like, well, we can get with someone can pack up your bike. And I was like, me and my brother both said, no, we just want to ride. So we literally went back to the track, cried in our helmets and just rode around for hours, yeah. Yeah. you know? And it's like, Weege won't tell that story. That's nothing against Weege. That's no, not like his job. Not- He's there to do a specific yeah. job. I'm there to like have... I've got this three hour block with these people and it's like, how can I relate to their experience? How can I, sure. you know, and, and, and break I down wanna, as many barriers as possible. Uh-huh. And so that's what I see is like, they're the conversations I enjoy having. Right. I know that people that do the show enjoy getting to tell that side yep. of their story in like a safe space, you know? So like the, the criticism of you talk about yourself or you talk about, you talk too much. It's like, Cool. That's my answer to that. So yeah. it's like, and if it's your, if it's not your style, and you think I taught, then that's and, cool. And guess you what? don't have to and, listen. And you have a fan base now that loves your story just as much as they love the athletes for, that you have it sure. on. Yeah. So like hearing your stories and your perspectives and things that you've done, you know, some people get to live vicariously through that. So yeah, well, I mean, I, I think that is what I, it is. I think even it's like also. The, Oh, oh, well, even like the swearing thing, like, oh, he swears so much. And it's like, okay, cool. But that's another way that I can break yeah. down this barrier of like, hey, bro, this ain't fucking formal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can say and book. do whatever you want to do, man. Yeah. Like uh, there is no rules here. So yeah. this can go that the way that you want to go. And when it was canard, I'd probably cast once in <laughs> yeah. that entire because, because he doesn't curse. Because I know he doesn't do it. Right. But guess what? I talk to a lot of these guys they do. on a regular ass basis. We're actually friends. I know how the fuck they really talk. So I'm just going to be me and yeah. hopefully they can be them. And I, a lot uh, of guys are more point. buttoned up than what they would be normally. But dude, yeah. I got Brian, Brian Deegan's going fucking, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and to me, that's what I want. Because right. I want that. I'm making the content that I would like to listen but, to. And that's the what the viewer wants too. They want to see Brian or yeah, Trey or Travis trying talking. to who it is. They want to see two dudes talking and them being the real self. Not like, yeah, yeah my Dunlop sucked up really good. Well, I watched you go this like weekend me, and dude. I got a great start. I curse a lot. Like in real life, can, oh my God. I, I can tell you this. I'm not bleeping out all the... No, uh, bombs no, in this no, one. No. This one will be rated Let's R. Go. Rated R, baby. Rated R for no, but, but, but like I the agree, first though. minute. Like, do I, the first I'll minute. I'll give you so an example. Is that really what you do? You do like the first few minutes. I've oh, started sweet. to bleep out my shorts, uh, my clips channel because I just want to make yeah, more money. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, if you on the full stuff, if you go like the first five minutes, then you're pretty. But sure. but yeah, I'll but. give you an example on 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 criticism because I think we all can do better with thinker. Like I think if you called me or or. David Iser or Kevin Kelly or Jason Wygan or Steve Mathis called me and said, Hey man, yep. you need to work on this. I'd be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Like some random guy who like, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of people that know things just because they're not in the media or podcast or whatever. Right. Like, but I, it's very hard for me to take that criticism when like, Hey dude, I don't criticize you about doing finance. I don't yeah, know yeah, about yeah, finance. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, you know, my reply, if I ever reply to people, I'm like, dude, shoot me a link to your podcast. Yeah, sh- or I'll shoot me a link your to your, your finance company, yeah. and I will just start dogging on yeah. how you guys invested in, you know, 401ks that bombed. Were you talking that? All right, let's do that, right? Like, but, I mean, and I've, I've tried to get better. I keep more conscious of, you know, and they'll you, be- You have to be, like, be, going back to your dickhead quote, you, you got you to gotta yeah. be introspective and, and see and always sure. work on, on becoming better and better. But, like, look at what your platforms become. Yeah. It obviously means yeah. you've taken criticism the best you can and you've grown it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. <laughs> it would have never gone because you would have had the same 40 uh, obvi- people hating on Obviously, you. people love the formula that you've created. And honestly, I love the 1v1 thing that you got uh, going on. No one else has that level of, well, it's of, funny. of depth. I, I was talking to him and I was like, dude, I was, I was like, honestly, I don't have time to listen to your whole show, but I love your clips because like Scott Sepkovic, like we talked yep. about it. Like I loved... Because Mathis wrote that awesome No Fear story yeah, that, I was yeah, at, yeah. that I helped him with that I was at when I was at Racer X, but Scott wasn't in it. So, like, I was curious about that. I was curious about J-Law, but, like, maybe I don't have time to listen to three hours of Scott. But, like, dude, those two clips, like, like dude, I'm I'm in on these. Jace baby. has definitely figured out the and, damn formula honestly, over there. Good job, it's, buddy. It's 10 <laughs> minutes, man. Like, 
It t- I, the t- I, I love that. The, I, um, I agree. The 10 minute ones are great for me dude. too. I watch a lot of your 10 minute ones. Yeah, yeah. I can watch that taking a shit. Like I don't have time to, <laughs> sometimes I don't have yeah. And again, that's hours, just like, know? I was just a student of the game in yep. other lanes and sure. no one was doing it. Yep. Uh, you know, there's nothing, I, I had to figure, it took me a while to figure it out. Like yeah. the, the first one that really blew up was the Deegan Pastrana, like Brian oh, Deegan's yeah, the real great. sellout. Yeah, yeah. Like that's literally... If you look at my, if I go back in my life or like the career of Gypsy Tales, that's like a pivotal moment. When when was that? Do you remember? Uh, I was 19. <laughs> Probably. It was before COVID. It, it was before COVID, but it took me a while. Like, uh, okay, the clickbait. This is probably something. This is probably a topic in itself. I tried so hard for so long to not do mm. clickbait, right? You can't. And guess what? I made a total of, Four bucks. Three fifths of fuck all <laughs> month on month on month on month on month on month. And I was like, dude, this sucks. Like I, well, no matter what I do, like people don't give a fuck about what I'm saying. And I knew the content was good. You know, like that Travis Pastrana podcast is well, unbelievable. It gets 250,000 downloads on iTunes, but it just didn't translate to, to YouTube. the YouTube stuff. And I clickbaited it with the title, with the, th- I just did but, the thing that they tell you, you have to do on YouTube and it worked. So when Pitt, that's the other criticism people but give me is clickbait. It? He did. It was a direct that's not, quote. Okay. So that here, here's my thing. People need to look up the term clickbait. That is not clickbait. I agree. He said it. What? Okay. I is took it, it not, out of context. Is, is it not? I, I spiced uh, up the context. Okay. Sure. But is it not our job to make you a headline that I you want to click on? That's literally only that's that's literally all YouTube our is. jobs, dude. YouTube and is. And if you want to blame anyone, blame YouTube, blame Facebook. Blame, blame yourselves. Blame yourselves because yeah, you're the yeah. ones clicking on it. That is not clickbait. If if that was a made up quote or you said Travis Pastrana said told uh, Brian Deegan to suck his balls. Travis, yeah, Travis Pastrana ate Brian Deegan's yeah, asshole. Yeah, like, that, that's <laughs> clickbait because that did not happen. Officially rated R. We that. don't know that if it happened or not. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, well, right. hey, now, now hey, this is a direct quote. Title right yeah, there, this right. is a direct quote in our podcast. Yeah, yeah. Jay said that Brian Deegan. <laughs> but that's how it works. Like you, yeah. someone says some off the cuff shit that's like the context isn't there. Yeah. So basically, but it makes what, you click to get the context. What, yeah, exactly. Clickbait is you give something with minimal context. And then that makes you oh. want to watch the video to get the context. Yep. And, and guess what? Everybody started doing it. Swap Moto, you can go to Swap's, in, to swaps interviews and it'd be like out of context quote, sure. tiny bit of context, thumbnail with some, like that's yeah. what we did. And then Pulp's done the same thing. Vital's done this. Everybody Roto Moto's done, I mean, done every, that. Everybody started doing, doing the same thing. I, and I, it's I, like, guess what? You should. That's how yeah. this game works. It, it's unfortunate because, like, I'm I'm the same way, dude. I I don't. I actually like grew up like super hardcore fan. Like, I'm just a journalism media yeah. nerd, man. Yeah. Like, I don't like. I do believe in there's journalistic ethics and all that stuff, right? Like, I hate doing it, but dude, you're right. You if you don't do it, good luck. You'll make yeah. four bucks. Yeah. All right, cool. And then you know, but but honestly though, like, I don't feel that you you make them interesting, but they're still, that's what was said. Yeah. Like I, I to me, it's, Hey, it works on me, bro. Yeah, I'll be and honest. And Cause like, I'll read some of your headlines. I'm like, shit, I got to click that donut. Damn yeah. it. <laughs> and there's, and there's some stuff too. Now where like, even Dino texted me the other day and he was like, dude, can you please change the title on this one? And I was like, Oh yeah, sweet. But I'd never seen that clip before. Like I don't make them. I don't yeah. do the titles. Like I need to give a huge shout out to Alex and Rones. They're the two boys that are in the studio seven yeah, boys. days a week. Yeah, give them a clap. Give them a clap. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You want to give them a double clap? Double clap. They deserve a double well, clap. There's two of them. They, there's two Alex, of them. So, but to the, to that one's for Alex. <laughs> give one. Let go. Give right, one for Ron. Ron's the big go. guy, right? Let's go, He's Rose. on the, uh, the, there's a, the, who does their super cross companion stuff? Uh, they kind of both do it. Oh, okay, yeah, I've seen so, one of them. I've yeah, seen yeah, one. yeah. Roan's Roan's probably the most on that, but um, but yeah. So like nowadays, it's to the point where like I don't even see everything. So like sometimes I'm like, oh, okay, we should we should probably change that. But I encourage them. I'm like, dude, be, be creative. Oh, yeah, yeah, go hard, bro. Go it, hard. Put, it puts food on the table for the whole well, whole it, crew. It, it's funny, like, and then st- Moto Kids, you know, like it's filtering down into the, yep. you know, uh, they they were both. They both came from high school. Like they were both working for me as an after school job oh, no out of high school. And now Rones has been with me three years. Yep. Oh, and wow. Alex has been with me two years. Hell and they, yeah. They're 
like Alex is a year younger than than Rose. So like we got a program that they like came through and like so it's like yeah, it's feeding families. It's yep. like it's doing yeah, its thing. I mean, and again, I I think they're. I'll send you a very good article on on the clickbait. It's what you're doing. I I wouldn't term clickbait. No, I mean, no, I, mean I, I don't. I don't. Clickbait again is so and so did this and this, and it's totally not true. Yeah. That is clickbait. If there is truth into it, yeah, there's it's definitely not, there's definitely some clickbait. people. In the it's sport. called writing a good <laughs> yeah, yeah, headline, yeah, yeah. and that's been used since 1920. When every you know yeah. there's, there's five the competing newspapers in journalism is if bleeds, it bleeds, it leads, it leads. baby. <laughs> they teach you that day one journalism. If it bleeds, it leads. Yep. Yep. All right, let we went off on an insanely uh, long yeah, tangent. Let's go back to the LAX airport. You're in, uh, getting on oh, the God, airport. I don't even remember what in, happened. In handcuffs, take me back. They, they take you off, but you had to basically uh, do a 16 hour trip here, set in a cell for 24 hours, and then a 16, and a 16 hour, hour flight home. back. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, all this so we kind of dove all around here, but like we just talked about the Deegan one. What at, at what point in time uh, in that transition were you like? holy shit, I'm going to do this. Just putting your head down. You're like, I'm going to make it work no matter what. At what point in time though, for you, did it click that you're like, I think this is a viable way to make my living? Well, so, okay. From day one, I thought it was a viable way to make my living, but, but there's a difference between. Yeah. So there's like a, the, thinking I would, and, and, and dreaming and it coming to fruition. I knew that like, like I've always known Vermoto was going to work, but it took three or four years back in 07 before it, f- f- you know, thank God we we're just young, dumb kids. Otherwise it never would have worked. Yeah. Oh, it ain't working today. And so same <laughs> with you. Like, I mean, you were, you had no choice but to make it work, but I mean, it had to take time for it to work. Yeah. I think probably, I think probably once I started making like a decent amount of money on YouTube, like add to where like YouTube was a thing where I was like, if I could get this thing to pop off on YouTube, then that's probably when I'll feel like a level of security because yeah. So I'd say there's like, I believe that it would happen from day one based on like the product. And then we got crazy good views on the audio platforms from day one. Yeah. So like, I think the first episode we did with Toby, which was like episode three, got like 45 or 50,000 downloads in the yeah. first week. Wow. And then and that we, was after the Fink, right? Uh, the Dakar. He won oh, Dakar. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so there was like a few podcasts that were, and then we went to, um, what do you want? You got the control? Well, I don't think we're allowed to show Red Bull straight rhythm. I thought we were on the uh, the Gypsy Tales. Yeah, let's um, play. Oh, we probably- dude, we, look how loose the program is. Uh, it, dude, this used to show the logo the full time. Then Crane touched my damn TV. And all of a sudden, it just doesn't work anymore. And now and it turns off. It times out. Crane definitely did something. I think it's probably because I'm in the studio. And then because I feel like this is... If, uh, if anyone's watched Supercross Companion, you just know that... Hey, let's just play like a Trey Canard. There you go. Trey Canard, full show. Um, Hi, Trey. Down, 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 down into my belly. <laughs> water, water, water. Where, where was I, Wes? Catch me up. <laughs> you were talking about uh, Toby. Yeah, so like the... the So anyway, I guess long story short, like the iTunes stuff did really good from, from day one. Yeah. And basically, and even to this day, I don't get paid for what we do essentially like so the views and the downloads that we get i should be making way more like i think that it could make with what we've already got we could make six figures a month wow so and that's if we had like every an athletic greens a manscaped uh like so we've only got those two like mainstream kind of sponsors right so we've that's like four ad slots of a month that we actually get paid for shout out to ag1 right there oh good but, job chase Thanks, brother. First time he's ever thought about me. So yeah, like if Thank we man. if we had these sponsors filling every available slot that I have, it'd be like six figures a month. So I always knew from the from pretty much the start, like okay, there's a really good product here, but it's in like a weird niche. Moto brands don't right. have this kind of budget. I don't have AG One's phone number at day one. So like for me, I had that confidence that at some point there's going to be a long tail. It's going to catch up and that it will become viable. But I think it, it probably wasn't until we started, we had like some, we had some iTunes sponsors. And then once YouTube started making like a few thousand dollars a month and I could bring on a staff member, because essentially too, I was in a bit of a race between like, 
I'm going to burn out at some point doing this all <laughs> by myself. Like the th- that <laughs> for three years, dude, I, I recorded each angle of the, of the podcast onto the memory card on the computer. And then I dumped the footage and then I loaded it. I lined it up and I cut every single thing that I made every thumbnail. I made it, like literally from it's start hard. to finish. I fucking hated myself. Yep. Like I literally had, like we were talking about it last night. Like I had like a weird ego death, even at a point where I got so sick of seeing my face <laughs> and hearing my voice. I'm not even kidding. Like it yeah. actually fucked me up like legitimately to where I was like, that was probably the thing where I was like, man, I just, if, if I can't hire somebody to like take this away from me, yep. then like I literally fucking hate myself. Like, and the amount of times I would criticize every single oh, thing that God, I said. Right. And it's like, that's the I, hardest part of being in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. I hate it, dude. I, I really do. I, I don't know how you've done it for. Well, yeah. And no, I was in a race to where I was yeah. like, I need to offload this shit. Right. And, and, uh, but yeah, so there, and then there was a point where, it's like a you reach almost like an escape velocity where it's like you think about a rocket like leaving the atmosphere it's like you've got a certain amount of fuel you've got like so you're like and you've got to get out and then once you get out of the atmosphere then you just can kind of float so i was like kind of i knew that point would be somewhere in the future and Mm. i don't know where it was what that point was but I guess there was, I lost the anxiety of it, like going away. Now this is, I know I can do this for the next 10, 15 years. It's getting your crew yeah, and and them knowing the rhyme and rhythm and you guys having the the, the dynamic for multiple years of knowing the expectation of your job versus their jobs and everybody doing their jobs in harmony. Yeah. That's the hardest part of business, not burning out and keeping that up and, and you know, where these overlaps exist and, and not, any one person in that uh, whole thing killing themselves. Yeah. 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 And it's such like a, um, man, there's just so many weird factors to this type. I mean, every business, like if you yeah. own any business, uh, there's it, just, it doesn't matter what it is. So much weird stuff behind the scenes that you've got to kind of um, yeah. like navigate. And then I think especially when, uh, when you've got like notoriety, when you've got a lot of people, like you've got to learn, like there was a point where the, every bad comment affected me. I read oh, yeah. every um, single I comment. Don't even read I, the com- read never, I learned that a long time ago. Do not read the comments. I, there was a point where I did, you know, like yeah. I really yeah. cared, especially when you're first on YouTube and there's sure. like six comments, like you can read all <laughs> yeah, six. Yeah, you like, can read all six but, real And quick. the problem is though, like the one, <laughs> even though you might have five great ones and one bad one, it's the it's one, the one bad one, baby. crazy that brings you negativity down. bias. So I, I, I've had a question for you. Um, did you notice like, so when we started, was it 19 when we started, like, did you notice when in Motospot, did you see a jump in your listeners? Like something like that, like that big of a show that you're a part of, like, did, did that have an impact or do you're like, "Ah, I didn't really see much of like an ROI on it. No, it was pretty big. I think it was big in like the credibility. Yeah, I agree. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 And I, and I think that, um, cause you were fairly new at that. I mean, it was like a year maybe you were into it. Yeah. And I think that, um, there was like a, that gave me a lot of credibility. And, and I think that, I, I think that people enjoyed the perspective too and like was, a different yeah, voice. Totally different. Well, that's voice what I loved about Motospy though is the fact that you have a different voice than Steve and yeah. then we use JT and Weege and like the way Daniel Chase, Blair, Chase like, does all the story production on that. So he's the one that like, list, he literally listens to every word you guys say, <laughs> yeah. transcribes everything that he comes across that he finds could should be useful. You should see this guy's spreadsheets. It's, you want to talk about getting sick of hearing your voice? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, talk about things, voice, yeah. like talking about things behind the scenes that no one knows about. Like yeah. Chase listens to thirty hours of podcast a week when we're doing Moto Spy and transcribing everything that we might be able to use. Yeah, and having backups on backups of backups, depending on what might happen at the race next weekend or next yeah. weekend, we have to be prepared for if Ken were to crash or Cooper were to crash or they were to win. So we have all these variable universes on a spreadsheet, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, 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 you know how many yeah, times yeah. And so it's crazy. Like we, a- for the most part, we do not cheat anything no, on Motospot. No. It was all, it's all it, legit. I and mean, so it, it's, it's crazy like that. You know how many times we had stories lines that were so perfect. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you just can't use it. Cooper well, crashes out done. at Arlington, but yeah. then you got to be on, we got to be, it's you got to pivot story. hard. Cause like that, I think it was doing like a week. So then you're pivoting going, please, God, someone, like, I, someone, please say I, the most I money quote. The, 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 I would give Jace topics. I would never tell him what to say. Yeah. I would say, Hey Jace, can you talk about Cooper Webb crashing in Arlington? Yeah, I got you. I would never say Jace, please say, say this. Yeah. yeah, say yeah. This. I think like, one of the things that's probably 
because I think we were on a bit of a come up and it was the right time. Like I think yeah. everything was gone. So it'd be hard to say views, but legitimize the voice. And But you know, the thing that it did do is it legitimized the audience. So oh, I think okay. our audience, shout out to the Gypsy Gang. Yeah, think, Gypsy Gang. Like you see the comments on those videos. Oh, yeah. It was all like Gypsy oh, Gang, yeah, Gypsy yeah, Gang, no, Gypsy yeah, Gang. No one else has that going. I thought that was so cool when I see that. And and I think that that's what's very, very special. And I think that to talk about that whole like, when did you think it could be a thing? When people literally started calling themselves the Gypsy <laughs> Gang, that's when I was like, that's super- Man, And now everybody has a game. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I've yeah. told Wes, I was like, dude, that's one thing Barstool has like, did so well as like they created these well stillies. nelk as well you know yeah. like the nelk boys they've got like that that yeah. crazy funk so i think like me being in moto spy legitimized all of the fans that had spent oh, i hate even using that term sorry um all of the people that listen to the podcast for like hundreds and hundreds of hours <laughs> yeah. it legitimized them in a sense i think is it weird that i'm there and there? like should oh, we change wow. the thing no oh, i like that fair. you're that's, you're over my shoulder and then talking? the next camera angle will be but you it's, it's Ooh, look at that good stash trick i saw that uh, the other day. yeah good. that's some run jeremy shit i love that <laughs> um but yeah so i think it like really legitimized the audience in a sense but the it was cool too and like that's where the whole like mathis thing where like he oh, shouldn't yeah, be a motor spy it's like motherfucker i shot moto spy yeah like the when moto spy very first, first started, started yeah i was one of the main shooters yep. on motor spy, and people just like didn't have that context and i purposely never said anything yeah if I'm, you go back in uh because technically we didn't start the series in the form that it is now uh until season four so the first three seasons were it like one off. We started with like Tristan Charbonneau and uh, Josh Grant. Grant. And then like Jeremy Martin. We did Jeremy, Jeremy Martin at Daytona, I'm pretty sure. Or was that yeah. for something else? We did. Um, no, I think it was. Moto. I think it was. Moto. We did the TLD team. So yep, it would have yep, been. Yep. I can't. I can't. Um, that was Jordan. Fr- it was Jordan Smith and yep. someone else. Yep. Me I, did I, it I remember because yeah. I didn't come on till. That's right. 2019. Yeah, you weren't involved. That was pre. No, 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 no. But I, I remember watching. So I didn't come on till I think the second or third episode of season one. Like when we went yeah, to the yeah. series, I was yeah. the one listening to all the podcasts, oh, doing all the shoots. But Doing even then, the dude, we spoke about me before I even started the podcast. We spoke in the car, like we were driving to some shoot, and we were like, we need to because it was talking heads interviews yeah. from the athletes. And we were like, man, we need to go to like this podcast. Like maybe there's a way that you can take that, that you know, quotes right. from that. So it's like, I was so behind the scenes in the whole yep. motor spy thing from like years before as well. But I just. I'm not going to give that context in the middle of it because people were going crazy yeah. with it. Steve yeah, was it's good. I mean, it was good for both yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is funny though. Uh, I remember going through all these iterations of what the story could be from talking head journalists, like the preview show. I don't think the preview show had done it at that point in time, but you know, I talked about interviewing Mathis and everybody at the races. And I remember Jeremy calling and being like, no, dude, that's just too, it's too set up. And like, it's not going to feel genuine, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And even time consuming. And he's like, I think it should be real. Yeah, we should go after the podcast. And I was like, Jeremy, like, how am I supposed to shoot seven different podcasts? And then luckily you started with a great video element. Steve started. Steve started doing video a lot more consistently and getting in touch with Marks. And I was able to get high res files from them. So that was a huge check. But for the first year, I'm pretty sure we sent Crane to Vegas quite a few times. Yeah, no, we definitely did. Because I don't think they were doing like, I think they were, that was like the following year they started doing video, but like, man, like I good mean, video anyways, but we got super lucky dude. Cause then that was like Daniel Blair was starting his podcast. Yep. Jace was starting his, we obviously had DMXS and, and Steve, we sent GoPros like, to every like DMXS yeah. uh, and Daniel Blair. And I at least got them figured out yeah. they could do that. And then they'd overnight me a freaking $12 card for $48. But I mean, man, but like, I'd have it here and we ended up getting video in, in all, uh, yeah, we, all that. I, I, but we just got super lucky with like, Daniel and Jace and like those great them, voices all them the way starting there. Obviously we had David Iser and, and Weege and all them, but like you can, you can't, and use we're them. all different. Yeah. yeah you're all different. And, and the different voices in itself. And uh, now even so cool. like Michael Lind, like the Hunter jet one, like Michael Lindsay and Lewis, like yep. dude, those dudes were great, man. Yep. Like, and I, I like, I'd love to get swap and Anton, but like I'm one person that has to listen to a million podcasts. Like at some point you got to draw the line. Right. Like, and, and I've I always used Anton before though. Like it's, you know yeah but i've always been in this whole shit as well like just big picture a rising tide floats all boats oh, yeah. you know and it's like that's why after that i played into the whole mathis thing 
heavy. Yeah, well, and that then, was play though. Yeah, right? that was, yeah, and yeah. it was rad. And again, like I have my feelings aren't in this, so like you kind of can do that when your feelings aren't in it in that way. And then it's like from from um, yeah, yeah, from there you you have like the reaction from the fans, and then it builds up the episodes even more. Oh, yeah. And then you know, and it's like I've got this over dramatic like vo- you know <laughs> over dramatic like kind of deal, and so and. Yeah, I just think that it's it's good for everyone when when those sorts of things happen, and I always like have that in the back of my mind yeah. when it comes to that sort of I, shit. I will say that is one cool like to me about the moto industry is like like we're all friends. Like I'm great friends with Steve. I'm great friends with you. I'm great friends with Weege. I'm great friends with Anton. Like I, I've always Lewis made Phillips, a point. Like I love all those dudes. Like I love going to the races and talking with Anton for like an hour. Like yeah. him and I talk forever. When, when we started cool. Verb, a lot of the media guys back then oh, yeah, there was uh, used to back snub, then. snub everybody. And I've always been the guy that's like, hey, I'm friends with anybody. Yeah. And honestly, if you needed a couple clips for me to make ends meet this month, cool, dude. Like we're all, like you said, we're all in this together. So well, we all just got to look like big picture too. And I mean, for me, I would be like, again, I look at the UFC, like that's the other sport I'm super into. You cannot go <laughs> on your phone or YouTube or without seeing good Some, content yeah. from that and yeah. and in moto like at the start for, for me i was like that just it, it's not like that now i can't open up my feed and have like a, a plethora of choice because it's like competition is like that's what literally open markets free markets are yeah. founded on is like good competition you know yeah. and for me it's like we race on sun, saturday we race on saturday and it's like so we're going to lose people to the NFL. Are we going to lose people to whatever? Are we going to lose people to Netflix shows Mm -hmm. and like have them not think about moto for a week until Sunday? Maybe they forget the races on. No, we got to keep people engaged in the sport that like, let's make people live this shit. And I think that's how you really get a sport to elevate. So that was always like my goal with this. We post clips every single day. Uh, yeah. I saw your uh, dashboard earlier. Yeah, we Mo- saw your dashboard. Multiple clips every day. Good job, Roan and a. Roan and boys. Yeah. So speaking of full circle here, you're back in the United States. That means you got that black mark removed. You got a visa. You're allowed to be here now. Welcome back. Thanks, brother. What's 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 the plan? <laughs> the the plan is to hopefully interview Eli Tomac. Yeah, Tomac podcast coming. <laughs> Jay, Jay, hey, you can do it from our studio. We can collab. J Law podcast coming soon. No oh, way. Shut up. Nah, I hope nah. so. <laughs> I, I honestly think that's what we're naming that this title though. J Law yeah, yeah. podcast coming yeah, soon. Yeah. Hear about it on the verb. Dude, he's he's DM me some like super heavy shit. Like I know a lot about him. I know why he quit racing. I know exactly what happened. I'll never say it ever until he is the, yeah, the he, one that, he gets to tell his yeah, story he gets to do his thing but yeah. i got so much love for that dude and my like my thing like i always like try and lead with like empathy when it comes to that stuff you know what i mean like the more human side of that everyone is like whatever fucked up trait that i have like there's a there's a reason why right. that's the way Absolutely. and it's the same for all of us you know everybody has their shit everybody's got their deal so um i want to kind of hit a couple of these these big name guys i've been waiting there's a couple of like big guests like outside of moto that i've been waiting because i want to do it in person like mark like, Wahlberg or what not mark Wahlberg, but like <laughs> on some pretty high level like Dude, mark mark marky mark would be sick i can get in touch with him it's like the, i mean i got like schoolboy q's phone number like there's a bunch of cool people that i want to that aren't in in moto but i just didn't want to have people like that go and sit in front of a tv screen basically, right you know? right right so the plan is to try and get a warehouse space somewhere in uh, in Costa Mesa. Have a Gypsy Tales HQ here in the in the US. Potentially, we'll see if we can make it happen. Um, and then a lot more outside of moto stuff. Um, yeah. But keep doing the moto the way that I'm doing it, but bridge out a little bit because I guess my like grand plan with the whole thing, if I could call it that, is like I look at what Rogan did for MMA. Like he blew that sport oh, yeah, up absolutely. deluxe, bro. And why? It's there's a certain level of social proof that came with being on his podcast, right? Yeah. Because he was getting like a like a Matthew McConaughey or a Elon Musk or a, mm-hmm. and then a Corey Sandhagen. Yeah. And you put those two people together and instantly it elevates the MMA fighter to the level, right? Yes. And that's what I want to do for Supercross guys. And that's why, like, I think that there's there's so many different layers of the cake 
on like a media or like journalist front that a sport needs to have to be like hyper successful. That's why I've always gone after the Daniel Ricardos. I've always gone after the Casey Stoners. I've always gone after the Mick Doans. I've always like full underbelly Australian gangsters. Like I've always mm-hmm. tried to, it probably went a little bit more moto heavy than I like wanted to at some point. But again, that was like a business decision. It was kind of what I had to do. And it's the easiest access. Like sometimes you just got to do low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. And, and it just got, it was stable. We could train the right. team. We could right. like really hone our craft. Now I and feel- that's, that's the bulk of your audience too. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, you're slowly introducing moto people to other things that they might see. But, you know, I, I imagine the bulk of your audience is probably pretty hardcore moto. For and the, there's a lot of the audience that, will say to me and i get so many messages of people being like dude i raced bikes as a kid and i just like went away from it and i started seeing your clips on youtube i saw this and i saw that and it's it's always those bigger guys right it's like dude i saw the daniel ricardo podcast and i heard him talking about the like how much he loves moto and dude i grew up watching crusty demons and like i had a i had an xr50 that's and so that's like that's always been my like I would see that that's my market and I'm never going to be like, I'm never going to be Steve. I don't want his job. I don't want to do what he does. I don't want that style of show, but guess what? The world needs Steve Mathis. Absolutely. Like motocross yeah. needs it's, that motherfucker. And he's great at what he does, dude. And like, I'll, I'll tell you this, right when we discussed doing this, cause like, I don't think Wes, neither of I really wanted to do this. Like we just knew we had to. And I was like, I was like, here's one thing we're not going to do is like, I don't want to yeah, try to be Steve a different- or Wygant yep. or Jason Thomas. Like those dudes are smart. They go to all the races. They're tuned in. Like I'm not, that there's no in. way to do what they do. Better. I'm not going to yeah. sit on my couch and watch the race and say, Oh, this guy sucks because he didn't do this. I don't know. Maybe he broke his rib <laughs> the week before dude. Like, and unless you're there to ask that unless question, I'm there why. to ask that yeah. question. Like yeah. I don't feel comfortable going, yeah. this guy sucks. Yeah. Like why? And why would I do that? Like, I don't even know the fucking dude. <laughs> like, and, and and that was my, like, I always kind of was like, all right, I'm playing the long game. This is the position that I want to be in. And like, I've got a guy, Mickey Mace coming on the podcast. Oh, we actually did the podcast. It was one of the very few that fucked up technically. So we have to re-record it, but I think it's going to be better now. But he was in <laughs> mini warriors, bro. Mini warriors fought Like he was like a mini oh, warriors wow, kid, really? right? You would have seen him. You would, you'd probably mini know. Mini warriors four? He was in one of the mini warriors. Mickey Mace. He, that's not his actual name. It's like, oh. yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, so this dude, he's a professional poker player, gambler, like makes mil, like oh, wow. fucking squillions and squillions and squillions of dollars. He's, I want a squillion dollars. Was he's, that like kangaroos? It's like, yeah, that's like when you're rich in Australia, you're a squillionaire. Oh, a squillion. Like, you have a freezer full of meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kangaroo meat. You got, you got kangaroos School, that like do your shit. Prime you. USDA. Uh, I yeah. keep wanting to try to make a SpongeBob reference, but I can't get it out. It's like school you there. <laughs> but so he's he's a guy like he's from the moto world, but he's playing poker with Dana White and Drewski oh, and like that's so. Cool. So it's like that's kind of the he, world that I want to be he, in, and then I want to have our guys be in that yeah. and try and use that social proof to you know to. Dude, that's, you know that's who I want to hear from, and he honestly he was just talking. I saw an Instagram clip the other day. I want to hear from Ricky Fowler. Like yeah. Yeah, he that's was talking I'll, about I'll like, probably do. he was talking about there. They asked him, he was like, they were like, what would you do if you didn't play golf? And he was like, well, I grew up riding dirt bikes and stuff. He was like, I would be in that industry. Yeah. And yeah. like, dude, it's so crazy. Like, so he won his first tournament in like three years of the week. Yeah. And I was watching it and dude, moto Twitter <sighs> went crazy dude yeah. Like, yeah. everybody was like, yeah, Ricky. So yeah, Ricky, he, like, he's I think a dude Ricky on the would list. be like, uh, like one of those crossovers that like, dude, you don't even like Matt LeBlanc, like all these people like Keanu Reeves. Like dude, there's, uh, I've got a list. Tom Cruise. I've got the, a list. The, the Tom Cruise on dude. The Dax Shepard thing that blew up. So like, Tom Cruise, he's, he's Tom Cruise if you're listening, we need no, you. No, but Wes, there was this, there was this picture of Kristen Bell and it was like her, her like dinner party or something. It's like, can all we see these, it real quick? All these, all these famous people. And someone noticed that somebody had a Ken Roxon shirt on. Yeah, it was Dax Shepard. It was Dax yeah. Shepard. Yeah. Wow. Like, Cause Dax is like a huge moto fan. So yeah. like, dude, dude that's this, cool. This photo blew up. Like it went super viral and someone's there with like a freaking Ken Roxon shirt on. So like, I get what you're saying. Like there's so many people that are underground. Like, and even like, so the fans that like, you wouldn't even know like Brad Pitt, dude, he, 
He used to do the voiceover for faster movies. So like. they might be watching this right now. Brad Pitt's probably well, no, watching. No, they definitely are. Yeah. But yeah, so that's literally like you're talking, that's the list. Like yeah. there's yeah. that, that's where, and I've just been waiting. So the, waiting the plan waiting. is to blow up and transcend. Yeah, the transcend sport. mode. Up. But bring like, and but, I don't but know but if it's. bring it back. Right? But, and, and, but I, I don't know if it sounds like pretentious to say like, but no, bring Moto so. with me. But it's like, that's, that's my goal is it's like, yeah. I want to, I want to do that same thing where it's like, we elevate these guys to their level by showing. And it's not because of me. It's by showing that those no, type of people love awesome. this dude, shit. Yeah. Let's know? get Brad Pitt to watch Shugle next year. Well, dude, Brad Pitt or the verb shred his. tour coming to you at the end of yeah, August, I mean, Labor Day. We could get Brad Pitt to either the national or verb shred tour. Verb shred tour would probably be well, good. Brad choice. already watches probably the broadcast, both. So probably both. Probably both. Like he'll he's he gonna be like I, he's like I love Wash Ugal, so he's gonna. I can't, I can't believe he wasn't every, there on the weekend. To I be honest, shocked. I mean, maybe he was. We just he's probably making it. a moto. Movie. Well, hey, speaking of things coming up, look at this trophy right here, Jace. I tried to talk you into coming to Loretta Lynn's for your very first journey. I don't know that it's out of the question yet. You it's haven't really actually question. told You've never me been to no. Loretta's? There is Never. there is oh, a spot shit, in the motor home for you if you tell me. And we try to figure this you out. Gotta this, go for at least a day. I, hey, what, what place amazing. did we get in the 250B limited? Let's see. We look at our trophy. Wait, who's we? Place, baby. Tenth place. Who's we? I mean, what, isn't that all of us? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, oh, we also have our media award over there. Oh, 2014 media award. Just putting everybody on notice. We're, com- we're coming for that. This we're year coming year, back for it. Oh, I Slow, got it. Verb Wes. I don't. Chase. Uh, everybody. Jace. Jace. I mean, Jace now kind of part of Verb. Like, yeah. You 100%. want? You well, want to I be- never left, baby. Yeah, never left. I. Uh, we need this to say 2023 media if award. If but you're hey, looking, AMA. Mike, if you're Mike looking, Pelletier. Verb Moto is one word. One word. We please. don't mind capitalizing the V now, but it's Verb Moto. One, one word. word. You know, just case 2023. You're looking for. Well, they're already probably like writing award. it up. It's like I know. Well, that's why. We're letting them know. It might be already done. It's already done. What if they messed it up again? Well, they have to go back and do it. Mr. Burkeen, just let you know. Come on, Burkeen. You know you listen. Well, uh, we got, uh, I want to do a live show uh, somewhere in LA the night before the final Supercross as well. So that's something that kind of the the boys are probably going to help me do that. So I'll I'll kind of like throw that out there in the ether as a well for things. VRB Jesse tells collab things that we've got coming up, and then also World Vets on the fifth of November. Oh, you racing? Yeah, I'm racing that. Oh, so I'm like, I'm probably yeah. going to hit this Officially. Peloton in a bit, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm, I'm uh, going to keep training for that. So I'd love to see. What do you, what do you think about my workout space over there? I'm about to hit. You it. see my Peloton, and I got the um, the tonal. You got the like weird fucking robot weights. Wait, no, I got it's a tonal, dude. Have you ever used one? I've seen them in expensive gyms that I can't afford. You know like a walk past on the window that ain't cheap so you're gonna like it yeah i'm excited i i it's changed my life it makes so really? with two kids uh i the tonal, i don't oh the tonal sicko dude like it um with two kids here it makes so i can come out here and and do it potential and not, sponsor maybe for you i, I wouldn't mean, mind i mean i don't know if you've seen but i need to get into shape so shout out rhino power they do give us the all the electrolytes that we need they do and they get you jacked. shout out to rhino for the fucking Goat gypsy tail episode yeah, right. too, by the way. Yeah. Dude, Rhino is he's he's a character, dude. I, that I, was a crazy way to do the he's the reason the US studio existed. No shit. So can I tell if we got time to Yeah, 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 we got yeah. time. Let's let's end I, on this. I think we have like six minutes left on these cards. Yeah, so, so I got a six, six minute story. I will, I will give you I'll YouTube give you a, segment. I'll start doing yeah, hand we'll signals. Doing. Perfect YouTube six minute segments, perfect oh, length. Oh, oh hey, We're yeah, this is where we do it. Yeah. So I hit up Rhino. This was when I was I was like, okay, I'm gonna do. I've got to figure out a way to keep the shit going through COVID, right? Yeah. And so I hit up Rhino, and or I can't remember whether he hit up me or I hit up him, but somehow we were talking on Instagram, and he was like, I'm super keen to do it, but I don't have Wi-Fi at my house, so like I need to figure out a way to do it. And then I was he, like, He also doesn't use toilet paper. I fuck. That's what that. Kyle Cowling told us. I I, I want to. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm right? sorry. We could talk all day. I'm sorry. About yeah. So uh, he. Uh, but yeah. So he hit me. He said, "I I want to do it, but there's no way I can do it." So I like had to set something up, and then it was just like light bulb moment. I was like, "Dude, gray background, get it lit, big screen TV in front of him, get the same mic." Is that when you called same. up Jacob Johnson, and then I th- I spoke to you. And you gave me Jacob Johnson's number and I hit up Jacob Johnson and then he had a spare room because he didn't have a kid yet. And uh, it was in the spare room of his house for like, I want to say a year, bro. Like yeah. literally millions and millions of views of the podcast. Oh, wow. Because, Jacob. Because of, yeah. yeah, because of Jake. So he gets his flowers right now. 
You, so, you made that are, happen. But are, that, that changed the game. Are as we well. are we giving away the secret? Is that like do, are, does do people know that's how you accomplish what you do? You well, have was, you have multiple sets in different locations in the via the interweb. Yep. And satellites and all kinds exact, of Elon yeah, Musk. Yeah, Elon Musk shit, yeah. dude. It's called You're X able now. to it's talk to someone live across the world at the same time with yeah. microphones. Yeah. And you get a podcast. We got, we got, so we got one in Amsterdam. So that's where the Jeffrey Hurlings one was done. That's where the first Stark oh. Future one was done. Wow. And then we got one in Dubai. We got one in in uh, LA. So yeah. It, it, and where do you normally do it from? Wherever I am. Yeah. So like when, when me oh, where and- Where do you get the background though? Is that just green screen? Hustle baby. He, did, <laughs> he packs it in the OGO bag. Yeah, I, oh, really? I showed him a picture last night. So like my now wife, we lived in Bali together for three months. Dude, I literally did like, six episodes of the podcast hey. from a villa in bali with like blue duct tape on the wall i ripped the fucking paint we're gonna off the talk wall about this off off air how the how the hell can i just go live in bali and still do this we'll talk about this off air. yeah, like, yeah. i want to go like i'm a west gonna be like yo dude can you still do the podcast like y'all yeah, yeah i'm in alaska but yeah let's get on but it is insanely hard to do yeah. different time zones different people oh, just it's like it, right? it's like a hundred gigabytes of footage that you've got to get it's like coordinating different people like, it's a full-time so, job hey people you can do it yeah this yeah is, good luck <laughs> yeah, how about it most time i have found out in my line of work you think you want to do it until you and do it you and, don't. and you might make it a year and yeah. then i think after that you're normally like i'm gonna go work at starbucks yeah, yeah. it's it's like uh what people don't understand is like oh you think we just do this. It's like, no, nah, this is like what we try to squeeze in in 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Actually an hour and 24, you officially oh, gypsy tells our longest record. podcast new yet, record. but Hey, I feel like it was worth it. And I actually have this like a great. thousand more questions, but coming up now, Jace, the next thing we will do, cause Chase is leaving us for a I'm few weeks here. I'm going to Loretta's at the end of this week. You're going to LA, but while you are here, we're going to go over some shoots. The original genesis of this broadcast was to actually reference yeah, old shoots. Right. And I didn't even want to talk about current events or anything. I don't. It kind of morphed into this because Chase doesn't know anything about film, so it's not the right time to do it or right person to do it, rather. But since you're here, I say our next one. Let's talk about Dream Ride. Yeah. Let's talk about Homegrown Ryan Dungey's retirement video. If we do a third one. Donna Party. Oh, Donner Party. Donner Party was pretty dope. Pretty Can we do three I'm more this week? Dream Ride 2 was gnarly, bro. Dream Ride 2 was gnarlier than Dream Ride 1. I wasn't on Dream Ride 2. You didn't, oh, you I, didn't, I couldn't come no, to Hawaii. Or did I not get the invite? Yeah, no, you couldn't talk. come. There was a reason you couldn't come. I don't know. I'm why. actually looking forward to listening to this. And thanks to Jace, we're going to be clickbaking the shit out of all these. So you guys be ready to watch. Jace is about to go take us on a YouTube algorithm Clickbait deep tutorial, dive. Mother. We're going to go to lunch. Oh, are you excited to see Nampa, Idaho? I'm very hungry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've seen nothing but the inside of my house so far. It was dark when you drove in nice last night. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Comfy bed. Oh, so good. I needed it. He's not jet lagged anymore. I'm good. I'm ready. All right, you ready to go watch Brixton ride his Stasic? Oh, God. Shred the oh, man. by the way, we will have to get into this the next time I'm on. We got some epic stories to tell about the Yeah, we the took Sirons. Brixton on our amped bike. First day com. out with the dudes, and so he, he crushed. Two hour ride with dad. I think every, we did what, every like time I miles? Stop, every time I stopped to wait on Chase, oh, I pull over and Brixton would be like, No, dad, dad. And he'd put my handle back on the handlebar. He was basically saying, I did have Why a are we stopping? I had, a very, I had a very dumb, stupid crash. Let's add that right here. Then and my we're leg, signing my off. My leg does hurt. We're signing off on Chase's crash. No, we're not. Don't put that in, Craig. Chase down. Chase, he crashed. Ah, you dumb dumb. Oh. Oh. Chase down. Ah. Chase, he crashed. Oh. You all right? Yeah, right on my day.